Hey everybody, welcome to Quinn and Mike's Game Corner. I'm Mike, and this is Quinn from the past. Uh, he teleported to the future because he wants to check out Zelda Breath of the Wild. Very cool game. Uh, as usual, we want to thank our regular downloaders, Lake Cam, Litchfield, Sapa TV, you guys rock, and HCTV. Can't forget about those guys. So, uh, Patrick, we're going to be talking about Zelda Breath of the Wild today. Um, so what's your experience with Zelda? How many Zelda games have you played? Well... It all started with, um, mm -hmm. what one was it? It was like a, I think a DS one when I tried it. And then I've never like been deep into the series, but I knew about it. Like I still played a lot of the games still. Mm -hmm. If anything, now I'm more into it than then. Than before? Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to get right into the game because Zelda Breath of the Wild is a lot different than any yeah. other Zelda game. Like it... Like, before um, before we actually started recording this, Patrick was saying how it didn't even look like a Zelda game. It looked like yeah. something different. So let's, I'm going to go to continue, and I played about four hours on this save. So so what is your favorite Zelda game, Patrick, if you had to pick? Probably um, Wind Waker on the GameCube or mm -hmm. the Wii U version, too. Oh, Wind Waker was great. I think my favorite one is probably Majora's Mask. I actually, do I have it on me? I have a Majora's Mask wallet. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> How much did that cost? Um, I don't actually remember to tell you the truth. I got okay. it a while ago. I saw it and I was like, well, I got to pick this up because I, I'd put Majora's Mask in my top 10 games of all time, though. Probably at like number five or three. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> so we're in the game now and we're at the Shrine of Resurrection. Now, this is where you start off in the game. Link literally just wakes up here. Um, so let's go outside to the world. All right, and if you look around, and this is something that I want to explain in just a second. So this is one of those games that you can literally go anywhere. You can go anywhere in the world here. Hey, so, all these cliffs. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. you see all those stuff back there. You can jump on them. Like you, you could, could go all the way there. You could jump on it. You can climb up any cliff you see. And there's tons to explore. You find these things like the shrines. You find like little goblin encampments. Um, there's these big things that swirl around that'll one-shot you, and you find lots of cool things. So, let's just get right into it. Look at that. You get a little glider, too. You actually unlock this when you beat the first boat about an hour into the game. This old guy, he'll, uh, I'm not going to spoil who he is, but he'll give you this paraglider, which makes traversing Hyrule a little bit easier. So, that's something that's very cool. So, this is actually the tutorial area I'm running around in, but I'd like to go maybe afterwards, just, just to give people like a scope of like how big the world is. This is probably the biggest Zelda game ever made. Yeah. Um, at the beginning of the game, the map kind of just looks like this. It's literally just this area, and you, when you're playing, it's like, wow, this is pretty big. And then the whole thing opens up. So, and the thing I like, too, oops, is when you're traveling in the world, um, there's certain things you have to consider. Like, if you go to a cold area, you need a cold suit on. That's what this tunic is. It allows you to go on mountains and stuff. Oh, there's actually a goblin right here, so let's take him down. We'll use a bow. If... There we go. And the cool thing is, see how he dropped his weapon right here? So now I can use that. I have a bunch nice. of different weapons in my arsenal I could use to fight things. Um, I do like this thing. Look how cool that is. Yeah. It's weird seeing Link not use a sword, though, isn't it? Yeah, which uh, still interesting. Mm -hmm. But what we just grabbed was this. And the, the crazy thing about this game, Patrick, is you can interact with anything. So see how I just picked up like a wooden club? Yeah. You can light that on fire and use it as a torch. I wish I was near one right now because I'd show you. Man, this game took about five and a half or six years to make. I yeah. Mean. Okay, so right here we're learning how to not beat a goblin. Oh. We need to open a new weapon up. So let's grab... We use a claymore, which is a slow weapon. Right now, probably good to use a bow against this guy because he's on a tower. Yeah. It's on lookout duty. Oh, hey, look, and we accidentally hunted something. So this is what I want to show you. When you beat a camp, some, some camps have these little chests that give you some pretty good weapons, good armor and stuff. So that's very cool. So whenever you see these, it's good to check them out. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier that the game is about exploring everything. It's not really... There is a main quest line, if you go to, like, right here. Like, you know, when you play a game, they tell you, like, give certain objectives. Yeah. But a lot of the objectives are literally just to go explore. They won't tell you where to go or anything. They'll be like, okay, Zelda took these pictures to so go find them. Go find the spot. Oh. So we got Opal. We can sell that later. 
So let's get off the, the great plateau and we'll head into the world. So do you have any questions about anything? Any comments? Um, for those, like, you got to find them. Do, mm -hmm. Will they give you, like, a map? Like, it'll show, like, an arrow where you need to go? Um, for certain missions, see that little yellow dot? Yeah. It'll yeah. tell you where to go. For this oh. one I'm on right now, um, there are missions like this where, for at least from the first few hours I've played, so I actually just unlocked this thing where you get a camera, and you get these different power-ups that you unlock in these dungeons. So one, you can throw a bomb, you can put a remote bomb and set it and blow like a cliff up or something, a magnet ability where you can use it to like, lift up objects, stasis to freeze things, another freeze ability, and a camera. And for this quest, what I have to do is not throw my sword, but I have to use this camera, and Zelda took a bunch of pictures, and you have to go find the spot she took the picture in. So they, they want you, they're, they're pretty much saying ignore the main quest and go explore. That's, at least that's what that says to me, because I haven't even done anything on it, to tell you the truth. I've just been running around Hyrule. Trying to, I found a few shrines. I actually found one, and we're going to, I'll show you one of them. It's actually an unsolved one. I haven't done it yet, but we'll check it out. It's in the desert. So let's go see what we can find over here in the, the great yonder. Um, I don't, go, oh, by the way, going towards that volcano in Hyrule Castle, you meet some pretty strong enemies, so it's not advised by me, at least. I learned that the hard way. You can also find horses in the wild that you can just take. Oh. So, that's pretty cool. The other thing, too, I'm going to show you, we're going to go to a town. And this game, because the world's so big, if this game didn't have fast travel, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be very good. <laughs> because uh, it would be a lot of walking. So, let's go to the first town. I want to show you some cool stuff there. The other thing, too, that's really cool about this game, and this is something I wanted to talk to you about, was, you know the original Zelda game is on the NES? Yeah. Like Zelda 1, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link? Yeah, we don't yeah. talk about that one. Actually, I'm just kidding. That was yeah. actually a pretty good game. But Zelda 1 and 2, this game is structured in a very similar way, but in a 3D format. So do you know in Zelda 1 where you go in, you don't even have to go in the cave at the beginning of the game to get the sword. You could technically just go explore the world. That's like what this game is like. Yeah. You, you don't have to start at a certain like, vantage point. And I, I, I want to say, and I wanted to ask you, in terms of like Zelda, I think, I think this is where the franchise needed, needs to go and what, more games need to be ba like, structured like this. What do you think? You yeah, think? I agree, because these type of games for Zelda, it feels like they belong for Zelda. Whenever I play games mm -hmm. like this, it, I think maybe Zelda should try this. Then I remember, <laughs> oh, wait, they did, and it worked out. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. And like, well, I love Majora's Mask. I love Ocarina of Time. They're all great games. Twilight Princess. Never played Skyward Sword, but I can see if you pick up the chicken. See, it's another thing I was saying. <laughs> little, little objects you can interact with and stuff. You can always do that in every Zelda game with the chicken, though. But there's one real test you got to do. Oh, no. Will I attack you? You know what I'm trying to do, don't you? Oh, no. This brings oh, yeah. back bad memories. Okay, we... Oh, crap. Run. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible memories. So, yeah, uh, confirmed on Quinn and Mike's Game Corner. This, this still happens in Breath of the Wild. Oh, is that it? They're not going to kill me? You got to bring the blast back to the path. Uh, that made no sense. Samurai Jack? <laughs> oh, yeah. I actually watched season five of that. Oh, it was really good the fifth yeah. season. My br but. Christian loves it. Anyway, so one thing, and we do have a new guest on the show right now, but um, one thing we have is the shop over here. And you could buy a new armor, new equipment. So that's really cool. You get rupees, obviously. It wouldn't be a Zelda game without rupees. So we have all these stuff. I bought the legs for this set. It's like a stealth set. So that's pretty cool. Hello. <laughs> oh, no. It's a, uh, we got it's a new a, guest of the show. Uh, Welcome uh, aboard. <laughs> so we're actually going to buy this. Are you asking? I guess someone wants you. Did you know that? Austin and the attack of the twonky, I mean pizza. This is the attack of the pizza, attack of the clones. So my favorite part of this game, Patrick, you know, I think you can climb anything. Yeah. Most games you wouldn't be able to climb a wall like this. It's not the breath of the wild. You can climb anything. So even if it looked like, oh, you can't climb that, but you, like, you can climb it. Even if it looked like you weren't able to climb it, you could. Oh. So right now, we're about to, we do have a stamina meter. 
So you are limited, but see how I just made that jump right there? Yeah. You always have to watch that because that's your sprint meter. That's like everything. Now um, I've gotten killed because I didn't think to use that. Like if say you go into a river or something and that runs out, you'll drown. Like right now, I just want to use an example. Yeah. Uh, so when you jump, it like takes away. That's only, well, for a skill, you want to use that like when you're about to go. Exactly. So, yeah. so I wanted to show you one of the shrines. Uh, these shrine? these are Zelda Breath of the Wild's dungeons, pretty much. So let's take a look. Let's go to the one. I found one in the desert before we recorded this. I haven't been to yet. Um, it wasn't in the grasslands. It was all the way over here, I believe. Oh, wait, no, this wasn't it. Where is it? Uh, I believe that. Yep, here it is, because this is the start of the desert. So let's go there. Link down below. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> The other guy, when he's on the show, he'll, he'll always say there's going to be an email down below, just so I'll have to add it in afterwards. <laughs> Shout out to Quinn Mack, who's usually on the show. Well, he is on the show right now. It's Patrick. So, we'll show you the shrine. And do you, do you have any questions? What do you think, Patrick, about this game? I have one thing I wanted to mention. Mm -hmm. So, you know in Skyward Sword, you know that dash meter that people used to complain about, well, they complained about the motion control, but this is overlooked, but I remember people used to complain about the dash meter. You know, the thing... The thing right here, this? Yeah. yeah. But in this game, people don't complain about it. I think that's because it wasn't about motion controls. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say it, but I think Skyward Sword's motion controls were kind of rushed. Or no, no. They, I don't know. They were something. I, you know, I, I kind of agree with you. I, I don't like motion controls in my games. I mean, yeah. the only thing I like is the bow on here that you can do that with. Oh, that's but you don't have to use it. There's the option to turn it off. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I know we're in the, the great outdoors. Let's check out a, let's check out a shrine. I've never done this one. It's probably going to look like an idiot trying to solve it. So let's see. And there's always a little story thing at the beginning. And the thing that's cool about the shrines, Patrick, is that you use this to upgrade your abilities and stuff to get more health to get more like attack power a bunch of different things so a little cutscene always plays when you go in one and every one of them introduces a new mechanic and you know zelda's always had puzzles in it so that always pops up it's always a little trial so actually after we do this one i'll be able to upgrade my link to maybe have another heart point more attack and stuff i believe it's just more hearts so so let's see, bravery's grasp. So what do I have to? So uh, let's figure out what's going on here because I have no idea. It's probably gonna be like the hardest dungeon in the game or something. Oh, those platforms remind me of those things in the Lost Jungle and the Lost World and Sonic Adventure. Oh my gosh, it does remind me of Sonic Adventure a little bit. That level, Lost World. Mm -hmm. oh, I remember that. Awesome. So one thing, you, you can scale walls outside, but you can't do it in here for some reason. Don't ask me why. Well, what is that? So one thing, that if I've noticed, is you look here, and it looks like these towers probably have something to do with it. And these things right here. So let's check out our powers and see what we have. This is a freeze ability. We probably don't need to use this. I'm guessing. OK, so that's a bad idea. There's a chest over there, though. So. I bet you there's something you can find to block the laser. Let's see if this is just a switch. OK, so that did something. Now, what happens if I hit it again? Does that go back up? OK. Now, I'm guessing we can climb up here. No. Oh. Not yet. So is there another switch on the other side? Because it looked like there might have been. No. So you can't jump over. Wait, can you jump in this thing? Yep, it's just very oh. faint. Wow, that was a lot easier than I thought what it was. The... Okay, guys, so. Anyways. When you think there's a tough uh, puzzle, uh, note to self, just jump next to the laser and you'll be good. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, these are very similar to the temples in Zelda. Wait, I can pick that up. Oh, I think I just solved the puzzle, Patrick. <laughs> ah. That's all. Ah. Oh, I see. That's what it is. So let's see where we have to aim this laser at. Because obviously, that's not where we need to use this for. I'm guessing maybe we have to bring it up there and there's another switch. Maybe. 
my luck link will slide down or something. <laughs> So let's see, I saw a bunch of switches up here when we walked in, I think. No, I didn't. That's where we have to get up there. So obviously this moving platform probably has something to do with it. Um, let's see. Oh, I know what we probably have to do. Oh, you can um, move it? Is that what? Ah, whatever. I'm guessing it might be something. Oh, I was just going to say. <laughs> oh. mm. So it doesn't appear that's what we're supposed to do. Oh, wait a minute. Aha, I got it. That's what. I got it. Patrick, we're geniuses. We beat the game. We're Jimmy Neutrons. We're Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> Boy genius. I'll be um, Goddard. I'll be that Shane guy. I'm just joking. <laughs> so what, what's your favorite thing about Zelda, Patrick? Um, probably the exploration. That's <laughs> r why I love Wind Waker, because, well, that was, in, I think, to me, um, I haven't played Twilight Princess in forever, but um, so far that I can remember, mm -hmm. that's the last game where you had the most exploration to me. Um, so yeah, this that's why it's my favorite. I like the exploration mechanics. That's what my favorite part about Zelda. And I, I think I, I second that. That's if there's anything I loved about Zelda, and even just as a kid, um, I used to I beat Ocarina of Time when I was a kid. When I, but the thing that I loved about it the most was just looking around the world, looking at all the places you can go and stuff. So this is perfect. This is perfect timing that we beat the shrine because now I can show you how you upgrade your hearts and stuff. So I heard something about shrine grinding. Oh yeah, people you, people will go around looking for them because that's how you get your power ups and stuff. Uh. Yeah, so they a little cutscene that they say the same thing every time. They're like, "Here's a spirit orb. Go spend it on pizza or something." Uh, so he'll give you the little spirit orb. Link will use it to cash in and get some stuff. So, but I, like I was saying earlier, I think this is one of the most well-designed games I've ever played because so many games you start it will. You fill tutorials, all this stuff. Oh, this God. game just throws you into it and lets you figure out stuff. And that's what I love about it. It has problems, yeah, like the Wii U version, the frame rate kind of dips a lot yeah. sometimes. And that's, I that's a technical one. problem, though, not with the design, I suppose. Yeah, it's just technical because, I mean, I'm surprised the game could even run on the Wii U and look as, in my opinion, as good as the Switch mm -hmm. version. Maybe the Switch is a little, but I, I, don't, I don't know so far, but... No, just, me too, honestly. Yeah, for a Wii U game, it's pretty good. Not saying the Wii U looks bad because it looks pretty <laughs> good, but so. So, so far I've completed about eight shrines. None of them have been too difficult, and a lot of them you can complete very fast. They take like, what was that, like four minutes probably? We figured that puzzle yeah. out. Well, I'm running around, I'm like, oh, how do I do this? I'm hitting the thing with my sword, but it was just a matter of putting, moving one thing from A to B. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's crazy though because there's so many different power ups you can figure out how to like do different puzzles with. So it's very, very cool. So after I do this part, would you like to try playing a little bit? Um, yeah, sure. Can run around, fight some enemies and stuff. Also, the other thing too, rain makes things slippery when you're trying to climb stuff. So it's not advised to climb things in this kind of weather. Yeah. Because, yeah. So let's hey. find, let's go cash in on these things we just got. I believe there's a little shrine in here you could go pray to or something. And oh. I think it's the goddess Hylia. It gives you power-ups. I think she's up here. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably be running around like a maniac right now looking for this. Might be over here. Actually, I think this is the entrance to the town. Yeah, it is. <laughs> There's going to be somebody watching us that's like ripping their hair around. It's like, go this way. <laughs> this, this is one of those games that you'll never remember where you go because it's so, just so expansive. You saw right there, yeah. the frame rate right there, just dipped down. Yeah. That's one major problem with the Wii U version. And um, I think people kind of forget about the Switch as a home console hybrid because mm -hmm. I'm not saying people do forget about it, but... I think the Switch, I know this is kind of off topic, but the Switch is kind of like a handheld console thing, but most people use it for a handheld. Some they people do. don't even know it's a console. They 100% they do. 
So this is the statue you pray at. And because I have four spirit orbs, I believe I can upgrade now. For four, so you can get more stamina or more hearts. I think personally having more hearts would be more valuable right now, especially because a lot of enemies hit like a truck. Um, so I'm going to go with that. Uh, the stamina thing is definitely going to be useful down the line, and I'm going to probably upgrade that next. But for now, you know, having a good defense is good. When I saw that, it reminded me of Smash Bros. Brawl for a second. <laughs> So let's head to the shrine over here. And I will hand the oh, controller to you and you can play with it a little bit. And let me know your thoughts on the game in a couple of minutes and what you think of it. Okay. And if you have um, any questions, just let me know. You have some more health points now, so you probably won't die. Um, the controls, I believe it's X to attack, the button on the left. <laughs> and then B to jump. You press B twice to use your glider when you're in the air. Or my X, sorry, it's the one on the top, Y. Yeah. I always get the Wii U buttons mixed up with like 360 buttons when I'm using it. So yeah, or Super Nintendo, or yeah. even the Switch. Wait, what are the? Is the Switch the same? Or I forget. I think it's a little. I haven't even seen it to tell you the truth. I want to get one, especially with Splatoon 2 coming out. Yeah, that uh -oh, game's so So it is nighttime right now, so it's the best time to learn how to play when the enemies get stronger. So yeah, I'd head up right there. This is how you attack. Okay, makes sense. Mm-hmm. The controls are really tight in this game. Oh, this kind of reminds me of Fallout 4 when you press um, Y, or in this yep. case, X. Yeah, he doesn't so. jump too high, but... Still, oh. yeah, at least we can jump. Ooh. Oh, so you might yeah. actually, um, you might want to take off your metal shield, because watch what's going to happen. How do I take off that? Uh... No, no, definitely not that. Um. So Link, so right now, do you see that he's buzzing with lightning? Yeah. Just for demonstration purposes. Oh. If you have a metal, this took me a while to figure <laughs> out. I was like, why do I keep getting struck by lightning? Oh, crap. If you wear a metal shield. Ah. Oh. So, yeah, just do a uh, continue. I know that, that was cruel. <laughs> Did, so, it does it auto save? Yep. Oh, very good. Press so A. Just, yep. So just continue it. And uh, so it's pretty cool, a lot of the stuff that, like, little details in this game that other Zelda games or just games in general don't have. Like, you're wearing a metal shield, so you attract lightning. Yeah. So, so now to take it off, uh, you, you pause it. And you go to the left with the right stick. Oops. Oh, um. Ah, oh, there we go. Yep. Oh. Then again to the. Uh, so right there, you equip like a non-metallic shield. So any of the other ones. Maybe this one. Yeah. Uh, equip. There you go. There you go. So now you're uh. safe from the thunderstorm for the most part. <laughs> Makes sense. At first, I thought you were saying put it on, and I was like, oh, how do I put it on? Oh, that's weird. Maybe you're wearing something else metallic. So I'd pause it again because. Uh, yeah. So let's see. Let's check your weapon out. Or your oh, you're using a metal bow, I think. Ah, uh, maybe I should. Is this one metal? Um, no, nah, I don't think so. There we go. Check out uh. Um, oh crap. See, even I don't know what, what I'm doing. Yeah, with this. Should I jump off? Um, not? here we'll I'd say just teleport to a different area. Yeah. See, I don't know too much about this game. Still, it's still all foreign to me. But I like how they. Um, this isn't a bad thing. I like how they kind of like throw you in there. It's not lazy at all. It's actually very creative. I like mm -hmm. how they don't use a tutorial. They just throw you in there and say, learn the controls, and it just you makes you want to you learn. Want. Yeah, you could go to Hyrule Field up north, but there's a lot of strong enemies, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend <laughs> it, especially as you get closer to Hyrule Castle. Um, the villain of this game, as usual, take a guess. Ganondorf. Yep. I, I want another Skull Kid someday, somebody like that. Skull Kid, um, Girahim from Skyward Sword, Zant from Twilight Princess is pretty cool. I think Ganondorf does a good job at being a, like he an does. enemy because he's actually hateable. Like, I like Bowser because I don't know why. <laughs> he's just a cool enemy, I guess. But Ganondorf, I just, ugh. Do, do that, you know, he does a good job. Do you know who's cooler than Bowser? Dr. Robotnik. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't let really get thundered. Um, let's just, there we go. There you go. <laughs> I remember this from Wind Waker. 
or any other that had this. Oh, there yeah, Wind Waker had the leaf, oh. didn't it? And Majora's Mask, I think, had it. Yeah, I think. I'm not sure about I haven't played that game in a while. I remember borrowing it. I had the, the 3DS remake and then the original one. Yeah, the 3DS version is what I used. I'm thinking of getting a Nintendo 64. I mean, there's... I actually bought a, uh, a Sega Genesis recently. Oh, nice. To go back Sega. and play some of the classics again, like Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 2, and 3. So. I actually found a copy of Sonic 3 boxed in my basement. Really? This again. And it works. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. So I'm just going to move up here and see what I can do. Mm -hmm. gonna... Oh, yeah. So, yeah, if you go run. up there, you um, there should be some enemies that you can fight, some goblins, so it's always pretty cool. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, it's nighttime, so there's undead out. So to target, you press L, like the other Zelda games. Uh, nope, nope, that not. So to shoot, you hold You hold down R R Z. You can actually pick up their arms and use it as a weapon. Oh, no. Oh, so yeah, that's your, uh, that's your magic power. Yep, better not attack him. Where, where did he go? I swear I saw someone. Oh, the guy over there at the pack mule? Yeah, I'm just going to go after him, see what he can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see if you can find anything for him. Is he good or bad? I think he's a good guy. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, he is. Uh, uh. So you can talk to him and see. Oh, apparently he's just transferring that donkey somewhere. I didn't know this was Shrek now. Oh yeah, I've just been saying that. Well, apparently he's um, Shrek, but um, I guess Shrek's cousin. <laughs> get it, because it deserves green? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. This is one of those <laughs> games that, too, you can get like just lost in for hours when you play it. Like, it's not like uh, you play it for like 10 minutes, really, right? this game yeah. boring. But the, the cool thing is, though, too, is you can do that with, with this. It's like the same thing. You can play it for however long you might want. But. And you'll, I hate when sometimes I play video games, not because they are boring, but they're mm -hmm. not boring. But I always feel like I'm wasting time because I'm like, oh, man, what am I doing? I better <laughs> be doing this. But for this game and other games like this, I don't really feel like that probably. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you got a couple of enemies right there, a bunch of goblins. I already killed them. Oh, that was easy. You did that better than I would have. I probably would have gotten killed somehow. What is Earlier, that? there was an yeah, explosive crate in here, and I attacked it, and I got one shot by it. I don't know why I hit it with my sword. I'm like, oh, this is a good idea. But uh, no, not one of my best plans. Let's just put it at that. What is that? Uh oh. So some items. Oh, it says B. I saw it said X. Oh, but at least they do that. <laughs> oh, so it looks like it stopped raining out. Perfect. So you won't have to deal with that hazard anymore. Yeah, I can't even imagine how long this game took to make, though, just people working on it and stuff. Like, I can't believe they did it in the time they did. There's so much stuff in here. It's crazy. Yeah. But So where do, where do you think the Zelda franchise is going to go, Patrick, after this? I hope it stays kind of in this. They can make the spin-offs, and they could go back kind of. Back to the... Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. But they could go back or something, but... You know, I like this more. Maybe they should do this for the main games, and if they want to do anything, like, mm -hmm. more, um, I don't know, more, like, original, classic, I should say. I, I'd love to see them yeah. mesh, like, what the original Zelda formula with this somehow, because this is, this is really good, but a lot of, there's a lot of controversy saying it's a big departure from classic Zelda games, that formula. But at the same time, it goes back to classic Zelda games, like the NES one. Yeah. It's a departure from games like Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and Skyward Sword. But at the same time, it's, it's something new, you know what I mean? Oh, you're out of inventory space for weapons. What was that thing? Oh, here we go. It's got a little electric field. Get better on. Oh, electrical attacks can shock you and cause you to lose your weapon, so <laughs> that's no fun. Logic. But, yeah, so I, I think in, like, a closing thing, I think we both kind of agree that this is a good place for, like, the Zelda franchise to go. What do you think? Yeah, I feel, I feel like it 
I'm not going to say, like, should have been there the whole time because mm -hmm. they can't do that on the NES, but... Yeah. I'm not saying it's a weak system. It's pretty good, but... Um, they couldn't do that at first, but I feel like they should have kind of started with that in, like, maybe Twilight Princess in a way, but not as huge as this world, but, you know. Oh, oh yeah, those things hurt. Yeah, oh. no, I, I kind of agree with that. It's almost too big. Like, it's one of those games that's, like, you're never going to 100% it no matter what you yeah. do. But I think... I think um, that about sums up everything about Breath of the Wild. Um, do you have any shout-outs you want to give to people? Um, so when you get back to the future, or when you get back to the future, you're going to know more about Zelda now. Oh yeah, sure. I'll be going um, my name Quinn, too. And... You'll be named Quinn, yeah. yeah. So that, that'll be a plus. Um, so... Anyway, guys, if you like Zelda, send me an email, mjohnson, hudsonctv.com. Let us know what your favorite game is. Um, this is Patrick from the Local Kids Show, uh, co-hosting Quinn and Mike's Game Corner. And we want to thank you guys for watching, and have a fantastic night. <laughs> Bye.